Welcome back to AMCI Testing. I'm Guy Mondramele, Director of Vehicle Testing. Wanted to start off by thanking everybody who's been leaving comments on all of our previous videos. We love answering them, love all the interaction, and don't forget to subscribe if you like these. In the news now is the record-setting lap at the Nürburgring of Porsche with their new Taycan. It's been generating a lot of buzz all across the internet and in our office too, actually. So today we wanted to bring you some of our internal discussion so you could also benefit maybe from some of the things that, uh, that we're talking about, especially on the technical side. So we're going to get right to it and talk about some of the implications that uh, this Porsche record setting lap has for uh, the future of enthusiasts in automotive and maybe even the future of automotive competition. Let's get to it. So let's get right into talking about the Taycan's lap. It was quite an accomplishment for Porsche, even though it was a prototype car, right? Yep. Um, and so, you know, looking through the video, there were some other things we thought we maybe could point out uh, from our experience on track. And so what were some of those things that, that we kind of saw that you thought were worth discussing? Well, looking, looking at the video, it's uh, you know, typical Porsche standards. Uh, they use their... They close the track, first of all, you know, not on an open day, so they close the track. They use their, the same test driver they've used in uh, past record setting, uh, uh, like the GT2 RS and the GT2 RS MR video, same driver who's a true pro. Yeah. and knows, Clearly knows that track. Knows that track like the back of his yeah. hand. And uh, so that, that, you know, that, that was the first thing you notice. Uh, now the other thing was the start. Uh, they had changed. Yeah. Um, the starting line, if you want to call it that, in, uh, uh, at the ring, um, and they, they were running the full track, uh, but not, uh, not, so not bridge to gantry, which is a, a common way for other, uh, some of the other videos out there, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, they had a, a kind of a slow chicane right at the starting area. The Taycan was uh, handicapped a little bit by that slow chicane, uh, not at a full race speed start like you'd see in Porsche's other videos. Um, after that, uh, really all you're watching is uh, uh, what kind of speeds it reaches and where, what the acceleration is like, uh, and then what the, you know, they had data acquisition uh, overlaid on the screen, which is pretty normal. Uh, it was, it looked like Porsche's onboard uh, system, uh, but we're not positive about that. It did say GPS on the, on the display. Uh, and I would expect the onboard system would be using uh, uh, the, the onboard accelerometers and, and uh, even speed, but uh, maybe not. At any rate, the, um, what was interesting on that, that kind of stood out, was the uh, G-figures that the car was generating in certain corners and how much noise the tires were making or not making. <laughs> so um, we saw um, c consistent sustained 1.25 Gs on flat corners, uh, which is pretty high. Uh, for something that weighs that much, uh, although it's a very low center of gravity, and, and we're talking, and it's got big wheels and tires on it, and we're talking about a great driver. Uh, but which tires? Yeah, so which tires exactly? So <laughs> it's a prototype. So was it on on Michelin Cup twos? Was it on uh, Trofeo R's? Was it on? Uh, they're talking about a Goodyear that may come on that car. So, mm -hmm. so you know, which tire was on it uh, is an interesting thing. And I we saw peak numbers that you know stuck around a while, and one of the corners that was one point. 5G that looked like a flat corner. So that's a pretty big number. Now you'll see glitches like that in, you know, we see it all the time, but uh, if it's sustaining it in a system that's updating really quickly, and that mm -hmm. one was, that's a big number. And so he also had combined numbers with braking and cornering at the same time. They're up close to 1.7G. So lots of performance there, which is which led to, uh, you know, th that lap time being so good. Mm -hmm. And so it will be interesting to see how much of that performance actually translates to the production car. Exactly. Is, you know, uh, what, is a production car going to do that? Is that tire an optional tire? Uh, is it even a tire that will come on the car? Now, Porsche is not likely to do something like that. Uh, that has been done in the past by some other manufacturers, uh, but... Uh, but this is a development car, right, and so right, who knows, right. you know, really. Exactly. We'll and find out soon enough, I the guess. The other interesting thing was that the car is limited, supposed to be limited to 155, uh, or two, uh, 250 kilometers 250 per hour. kilometers per hour, which is, is 155. We saw uh, on the onboard data acquisition, we saw numbers that would exceeded that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not terribly unusual in our experience. Uh, uh, that's a soft limiter, and you'll head, as you head up on a kind of a long straight uh, to, and get near the top speed, it'll exceed that, and then usually it'll drop back down a little bit. This one didn't really do that, uh, but uh, 
Uh, it, again, it's a soft limiter, and you can uh, you can see that happen. But it was a little surprising. And we've seen a lot of variability in those limiters, actually, in some of the yes. top speed testing that we've done. Just yeah. kind of the way they work and stuff. Yeah. And um, what what that did, what we saw there, wasn't that unusual. There was a lot of comments under the video talking about that, but uh, that's not that unusual. So. We could talk some about top speed testing. George is over. George, why don't you come over? Tell, think of a couple of good anecdotes from uh, okay. some of those well, tests we've done. Why don't you oh, take yes. the chair for a second? Okay. Yeah, Gary. So, this dates ourselves. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately. So, yeah. Uh, they, one of the best examples was uh, way back, we are testing uh, top speed on a rather small track with some bumps. And uh, we're testing uh, yeah. what it was the ISF versus M3 versus RS4 versus 9.11. And uh, the interesting thing was with the, with the ISF, right? Do you remember? It was supposed to have a top speed of 168. Right, right, right. But it was accelerating pretty hard, right? Right. And um, as I recall, we hit 175 That's uh, right. in that car on a on a bank track with some long straightaways in between the banking. But uh, yeah, it, the other cars were limited. Uh, yeah, with electronic limiters, but again, soft limiters. Yeah, the M3 too. At that time, mm -hmm. it was a it was a, uh, the V8 M3, uh, and then uh, it would go up. To, it, we found out it was limited to about 165, if I remember right. Right. So that uh, brings us back to that point that uh, those speed limiters are frequently um, uh, soft is the right word. Yeah. So, I yeah. Think. yeah. It was interesting to see at that time with that Lexus ISF, it would get to 173, 175, mm -hmm. and then it would very gradually, very smoothly bring you back down to 168 because the car was accelerating so hard at that moment that it didn't want to create any instability. Right, that's one, that's one of the reasons. Um, suppose you're reaching that speed in a, in a banked corner uh, in, the, in the top lane next to a guardrail. Uh, like we were doing. Like we were doing. Uh, and that limiter came in really hard. Um, that could create some uh, instability, which could be quite dangerous, really. So, exactly. So that's one reason that limiter is built that way. Yeah. yeah. So speaking about all of that and performance, let's talk about motorsports or enthusiasts and EVs? Well, that's a good topic. Uh, I don't even know where to start. So it can be extremely fast. And now sure. in the world of rallying, we have Hayden Padden developing a Kona that he says will have 800 horsepower. What is very interesting, he's saying that he variable will do some horsepower variable, variable horsepower, yeah. yeah. And uh, Padden is saying that he's working hard on developing a sound image for that car. Right. Because he knows very well that without sound, there's not much. I mean, Perfect point. Uh, you know, the, the, the part of that visceral experience is listening to that car coming at you in a canyon with trees around, and you can hear it long before you can see it. Absolutely. And that's what the fans lining the course are waiting for. Uh, Just like yeah. F1, right? Sure. I mean, and, and when, when they went to the turbocharged engines a couple of years ago and the uproar about... Uh, Losing that uh, fantastic classic F1 sound uh, because the turbochargers muffled that uh, caused quite a, a backlash. They, they got to do something about the sound, and right. Padden is quite right in uh, worrying about it and doing something with his Kona uh, rally car. Right, and he's saying he's going to generate yeah. some noise. So what's it going to sound like? What's well, this noise going to sound like, and how is it generated, and how much power... <laughs> Does it take to generate exactly. that noise? How many speakers will you have on the outside? Right, so. Will it be like a speaker shaped into an airfoil? <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, where's that? And where's that weight going to be? Is it? And yeah, where's, where are the amplifiers? Questions. So lots of questions about EV. It is the future. Um, you know, even maybe in racing. And Formula E is already out there. Correct. Formula E has been somewhat successful, um, but do and I I will I will. I, watch that, uh, yeah. but I miss that sound, uh, exactly. listening to those tires and the whining from the, uh, from the drivetrain. Exactly. Uh, you know, something's just missing. Who knows, maybe the future will be uh, geared mm -hmm. EV systems mm -hmm. to maybe they intentionally make the motors very loud and uh, augment maybe the sound and then you have actually a gearbox or you have the yeah. RPM change. Uh, so maybe... If you're younger, you don't miss it as much. If exactly. You're older, and are used to uh, uh, what cars sounded like in, in, in fairly recent history, uh, that stuff is very important. So. That's right. Yeah. Now that we covered uh, F1 and we covered, uh, you know, rallying, how about we talk about something you and I kind of like to do on the weekends, which is 
pro solo events uh, with the Sports Car Club of America. There is one or two Tesla 3s being campaigned right now. The big thing is the Model 3P has been classed in uh, SCCA Pro Solo classing structure. Mm -hmm. And it's in there with the M3, the M4, the M2, uh, the Camaro SS1 LE. Yep, uh, strong cars. A, a strong group of cars, the Mustang GT350. That's right. Uh, so, you know, go on and on. So the reason is, obviously, the car is very powerful and it launches like crazy. So, yeah. so that was kind of the point here yeah. uh, was the, you know, I have to, I got my notes here, but uh, from a recent event at Pro Solo, they're doing really well because of that ability to get off the, get off the line and, and launch the car hard. So he, the 60 foot times for the Model 3s at a recent event here, uh, I, I wrote them down, and he, the consistent mid one eights to uh, 60 feet. That's Excellent. really good. That's, Very good. you know, all wheel drive, uh, obviously, uh, uh, like a modified Evo would run, or a GTR exactly. that's pretty similar. A little bit, a little bit slower than that. Depends on how much power uh, mm -hmm. it's making. But to give you an example, the the second place car at this event was uh, a multi-time national champion in a Mustang GT350, an extremely powerful car and a capable car. Uh, but his 60 foots were in the mid twos, yes. so 2.2. Uh, so mid 2.2s is what I mean. So take that difference, and that again, the two sides are added up. So that. That difference of four tenths, uh, uh, approximately, is per side. So that's eight tenths of a second that that Tesla had as an advantage right at the 60-foot mark. <laughs> and that and that national champion in the GT350 has got to try to make up that eight tenths. Well, he wasn't able to. He he made up six tenths of that uh, based on the times. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, you know, the, the Tesla ended up winning by uh, two tenths, by just over two tenths. Yeah. So. so we've been talking about the Model 3 performance and how it does in Pro Solo regarding uh, the launch, the mm -hmm. start. Mm -hmm. So how about the handling of it? Well, you can't completely defeat the stability control, uh, but uh, Tesla's done a good job with the stability control with the help of, uh, for instance, Randy Popes at Streets of Willow. That's so right. they've got that tuned where the car uh, reacts well and it doesn't interfere a great deal. So it's a matter of getting along with it uh, like, we've, like we've done in testing with uh, That's right. lots of vehicles. Uh, but uh, it's no slouch out on the course. Now I'm talking about the advantage he had at the launch was huge and the, and the outstanding driver in the Mustang GT350 was, uh, was gaining on him, um, which was shown by the figures that we, that we quoted there. Uh, and the M2s and M3s were gaining on him too. I see. But uh, those are pretty impressive cars. That's uh, right. So the, and the NSX ran much better times than he did, even That's though right. he didn't match those launch. Uh, uh, Quite. You know, yeah. 60 foots, but uh, pretty close. Pretty close. So that, and obviously the car's much faster out there. But the point is that the Model 3P is, uh, is not exactly helpless out on the rest of the course, yes. all through the corners and, and the short straights that are out there. So, so we talked about our, our world of SCCA Pro Solo, and we talked about uh, Formula E a little bit and maybe the WRC. So the EVs are coming. Uh, the EVs are entering the world of Like it or not. Like yeah, it or not. They're coming. So it'll be exciting to see how, where this goes from here. Yeah, how's the Taycan going to do? Exactly. So. so Porsche's new record with the Taycan at the Nürburgring has really refocused enthusiast attention back on performance in the EV sphere. But when we talk about this internally, we're constantly surprised that there's really been no credible comparison test between the best of what's currently available in IC engine and EVs. That to us would be the Tesla Model 3 Performance and the BMW M3 or M4. So here's what we're gonna throw out to the YouTube community. If you have one of those cars and would be willing to have us test it at our El Toro test facility here in Southern California, we would like to invite you out to participate in one of our tests and one of our videos. You can find out how to contact us below in the description, get in touch with us, and we want to make this happen. So we'll put together what is the definitive test in this area with your help. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you back next time.